after walking through this problem, you should be able to have a better understanding for the nature, type, and valuation of current liabilities. So uh, let's go ahead and this problem together. Here's the problem that I've posted for you. I'm not going to spend time here uh, rereading it, but uh, in essence, we have these four different uh, transactions. <clears throat> and then I ask you to make all the journal entries and then deal with some balance sheet issues at the end. So the first part I've, I've broken down here for us is uh, the transaction on February 2nd, the corporation purchases goods from Martin Company for $70,000, subject to cash discount terms of 210 net 30. Our recorded net amounts uh, after cash discounts, that's important, and then we pay the, the invoice on the February uh, 26. So here we are over here. Before we uh, record any transaction, it's important we understand the essence of the transaction and what happened. So we're Edwardson Corporation. We purchased something from Martin Corporation, and I've just drawn out for you what happened. So we got from them inventory, and in return, we gave our pinky swear a promise that we'll pay him in the future. So to record this transaction, we first look at the date. It's February 2nd. We have to look at what we received, which was the inventory. Since we're using the periodic method, we recorded in purchases. So we debit purchases. See, I've got the T account down here. De uh, purchases go up on the left. And we recorded at our cost, which is not $70,000. we are going to take 2% off. That's the 210. And so, therefore, we have 68000 six hundred dollars and we credit this thing called accounts payable that's our current liability just abbreviate that with AP for sixty eight six hundred so that's our promise we promise to pay them that in the future so that's our first transaction uh, so next uh, we have to journalize the actual payment February 26 notice the date here the 26 which is 24 days after the initial purchase which is outside of the discount period and so uh, the terms net 30 apply so on the 26th what we're going to be doing is paying them what I forgot to do is post this transaction down here accounts payable any liability goes up on the credit side so sixty eight thousand six hundred dollars gets posted here purchases would come in here at sixty eight thousand six hundred and so next, we have to pay it. And to pay it, we're going to take and get rid of our, our payable. We're going to fulfill our, our promise. So accounts payable gets debited for the promised amount, which is 68600 We have to pay cash. Here's the challenge, though. The cat, we're going to have to actually pay them more than the this is an eight sixty-eight thousand six hundred 68600 because we paid outside of the discount term. So we have to actually pay them all 70000 But debits don't equal credits. We know we're off by 1400 We can't throw the 70000 into the accounts payable because we only owe them 68600 So we want to show owing nothing at the end of this transaction. We debit something called purchase discount lost purchase discount lost be some sort of an expense account so that's the transaction for this first uh, problem in this third tra in the second transaction rather we uh, on April 1st we entered into a transaction for a truck right here again we're Edwardson uh, we went to GM we bought a truck they give us a truck we give them an exchange some cash, so that's this cash up here, but we also give them a uh, promise, it's two things, we don't have enough cash to pay for it, so we give them some cash and then the promise to pay the rest with a, t a term of 12%, one year we call that a no payable, so that's a current liability as well. To journalize this on April 1st, we have to show the asset increasing, which is the truck, at our cost, which is 50000 and we have to show what we gave in exchange, the cash and the promise. So our cash goes down by 4000 
and we show this note payable increasing the current liability for the difference 46,000 and that's how we journalize that transaction it's that simple let's post so the note payable is the current liability increases on the credit side forty six thousand dollars the third transaction that we're gonna look at happened on May 1st we went to the bank US Bank we borrowed eighty three thousand dollars so they gave us cash and in exchange we're Edwardson in exchange we gave them our pinky swear again a promise but look at what we're going to promise to pay them is $92,000. There's a zero interest bearing note due in one year. So what that means is they're only giving us $83,000. We're going to give them $92,000 in return. The difference, the $9,000, is is, in, is really interest. So we call that a discount on the note. So what happens is on May 1st, we show uh, what we received, which was the cash. That's an asset going up. They gave us $83,000 in exchange we gave them a note payable promised to repay them not 83,000 but 92,000 debits don't equal credits we're off by the 9,000 that's our interest we'll actually pay in the future but for now we're going to call it a discount on the note and so that's a contra uh, liability account. Let's first post our note payable, which is a current liability. It's due in one year. That makes it current. 92000 comes over here. And the discount, contra, contrary, so you can see the sign here, is contrary to the liability. Increases on the left. That's where the 9000 goes. And we're done journalizing that transaction. The final transaction we're asked to record happened on August 1st. The board of directors for Edwards & Company sat down. They declared a $300,000 cash dividend payable on September 10th to the stockholders on record on August 31st. So we have three different dates there. We're not going to get into dividends, how they work here, um, beyond the transaction. So here are our shareholders. We gave them cash, dividend, part of our, our profit retained earnings. So in exchange, they let us take and appropriate some of that retained earnings. So we gave up retained earnings in exchange for cash. So what happens is on August 1st when we declare the dividend, every single dividend comes out of retained earnings. It's an equity account for the whole 300000 and we're not paying it yet. Notice we don't pay it until August 31st. So at this point, it's a current liability because it's short term. We're going to pay them within a month. And so we're going to go ahead and actually pay them on September 10th, but still short term. So we credit dividend payable for 300000 That's our current liability. Now let's go ahead and, and journalize when we actually pay it, which is on September 10th. So on 9-10, what we didn't do was post. So let's do that. Notice I have dividends payable right here. That 300000 comes down, showing I owe them that money. My retained earnings uh, actually didn't go up. It went down by 300000 So when I pay it, I'm going to show this dividends payable going away. My obligation becomes fulfilled when I actually pay it. So dividend payable, 300000 and I pay that out in cash. Done with that transaction. So now that we've recorded all the journal entries, we've fulfilled the requirement one, and we'll move on to requirement two, which says now it's the end of the year, and no adjusting entries have been made. And so therefore, we have to make any appropriate adjusting entries. So that's what I'll walk you through next. Before we actually make the adjusting entries, I just drew a sketch here to show you why it's important and why we have to adjust. And so there are two financial statements here. One is the income statement, and the other is the balance sheet. And I've just sketched those out for you to show you why we do this. So uh, we're dealing with the current liabilities, which are over here. And um, if we do nothing, which is uh, making no adjusting journal entries, 
we run the, the risk of understating some of our obligations. So we might have more liabilities than actually meets the eye. And so we have to make sure that this is accurate because investors are looking at this. So it needs to be accurate. And I'll show you why that's understated. And then also, if we don't adjust, we've entered into some loans, some obligations, there's some interest that corresponds with that. If we don't make the adjustments, interest expense is not recorded on our income statement. And therefore, our interest expense is understated. There are not enough expenses on this income statement. And in essence, what that does is it overstates profit. That's a bad, bad thing. We want to make sure this number is as accurate as it can possibly be. And therefore, the adjusting process will take, get the right amount of expenses into the right income statement, and appropriately show the investors how much uh, liabilities, how many obligations we have in the near term. So I've brought us back to our first transaction to see if there's any adjusting we need to do in regards to this current liability. Notice this was the accounts payable transaction where we bought inventory, gave our promise in return. And so if we go ahead, and we had done this previously, but if we post the 68600 when we uh, purchased the um, inventory, and then we actually paid it off, so we debited this account back for 68600 Notice the balance now is nothing. My debits equal my credits. So there, this, this isn't overstated. This isn't understated. It's at zero. So there's no adjustment necessary. So for this very first transaction, I don't have to do anything. Let's take a look at the second entry that we booked for the purchase of this truck, which uh, we gave some cash and a note payable to finance it. So on April 1st, bought this truck for 50000 paid 4000 in cash. The balance was financed with a one-year 12% note represented here by our journal entry. Our current liability was for $46,000. So what's happened is now we... Uh, have gone through the year. We signed the note on April 1st. Nine months have passed. It's now the end of December and we have to accrue for interest since this is a loan. Uh, the nine months that have passed there's some interest that we have to show within our financial statements in order to be accurate. So to figure out how much interest we should accrue on this loan I took the balance of the loan, the 46000 multiplied it by the interest rate which was listed here however this interest rate is an annual rate and so we have to break it down into the months that have been uh, actually have occurred in this fiscal year which are nine right nine months and so we multiply the, the loan balance times the interest rate times the amount of time in this year which gives us forty four thousand one hundred forty dollars of interest expense that we need to record as an adjusting journal entry. And to do that, we debit interest expense. So now our income statement shows an extra interest expense of 4140. And we're not paying that interest yet, so we don't credit cash, we credit the interest payable. We'll be do, we do pay it will pay it on April 1st when that loan becomes due. So that's it for this transaction. If we look at the third transaction, it's very similar to the second transaction. We entered into a, a, a note payable, however this one is different. Well, first thing is the date. We entered into it a, a, a month later, and we financed $83,000. Uh, however, the interest is buried inside this note. It's zero interest bearing. That's what makes a difference from the last transaction. So what happened was we received the cash up front, promised to repay now $92,000, and the $9,000 represents that interest in the form of the discount on the note. So to accrue for the interest or to uh, make the adjusting entry, what I've done is, again, I've outlined how many months have passed since we uh, entered into the transaction. So from May 1st all the way through to the end of the year is eight months. And to show how much interest then should be accrued, I took the balance, not of the note, but of the discount, because that's what is the discount is is the is the interest expense that we've kind of prepaid, and uh, the eight twelfths is the months that have passed, and so if you do the math, six thousand dollars of interest expense needs to be accrued. The uh, journal entry looks slightly different; it's still on December thirty first. Interest expense is debited. 
we credit the discount account. There's no interest payable because what happens is if you look up here uh, back at the journal entry by crediting discounts payable, in effect we've done this and there's three thousand dollars left in this note payable. So on the financial statements what happens is we net these two together the note payable and the discount and so what's shown is a current liability of eighty nine thousand dollars after we've made the adjusting entry. Had we not made that entry what would have happened was this nine thousand would be combined with the ninety two thousand and it would only show uh, eighty three thousand dollar current liability and so that would be understated when you compare it to what it should really be. If we look at the very last transaction within this problem this was where we paid out to our shareholders uh, cash dividend and um, as far as an adjusting journal entry what I've done here is I've showed you through the T accounts what this series of transactions have done to our current liability so the dividends payable we posted when we originally declared the dividends the three hundred thousand dollars increased the dividends payable and then we actually paid the dividend so we debited that amount and so the net effect is that there is no current liability so when it comes to adjusting journal entries there's nothing to adjust so this one is another simple transaction because there is none there's no transaction needed for the adjustment. So that brings us to the end of this problem. I hope you found this video helpful um, and if you have any other questions feel free to stop by and see me.